And I have the great honour of introducing some of the esteemed panellists today who have been through the XFE process. And they're going to, in a moment, just introduce themselves a little bit about who they are, their background, the journey they've had with XFE, and where they are in business today. And then what we'll do is we'll open up to the floor, and you'll have an opportunity to ask some questions of the panellists. And we believe we've got some roving mics in the room. Good. And so if you can just pop your hand up uh, after the introductions, if you have a question. Uh, but because the sound system is currently off, uh, we won't need the mics. OK, so you'll just have to project your voice. Good. So I'm going to hand over now to Jen oh. and, and <laughs> ask you just to tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your background, your link with the armed forces and your XFE journey and where you are today. Do you know, I've actually got notes in my pocket because I was going to be notes that nervous. Notes are good. But I um, thought, right, what do I do for a living? So, <laughs> really, I really am that bad. I know what you do. So, yeah. <laughs> so obviously I'm Jen. I, um, I'm an SEO consultant. I was in the military quite a long time ago. Um, my father was in the military. My ex-husband was in the military. And to be honest, when I first came across X Forces Enterprise and started getting involved, I felt like such a fraud because my serving time was so tiny. I was like, oh, my God. And such a long time ago. I thought I didn't deserve to be amongst all of these other people who were doing amazing things. And I've forgotten the rest of your questions already. See? Even so, notes. for those that don't know, what's, what's an SEO consultant? So, SEO is search engine optimization. And one of the reasons I joined the XFE community is websites aren't things people in the military have on their day to day basis. Um, and there's a common misconception as well that if you, if you build it, they will come. And that's not true. Mm -hmm. Not in the slightest. So I literally went into business to help small businesses. People like me, because sometimes everything seems so unachievable. Um, oh yeah. So making that decision to go into business, how did you discover X Forces Enterprise? Um, LinkedIn, LinkedIn, actually, during the pandemic. Um, I have no idea who shared it or anything like that. It might have even been an ad, to be honest. But I thought, Do you know what, I'm going to give this a crack. Um, so I've been involved with training. Um, I've done a lot of networking, I've met so many people. I now have customers via the XFV network and it's really nice because people are like-minded. Even when you've only been in the military community for a relatively short pe period of time, everybody's got a fairly similar mm -hmm. pull your socks up and crack on mindset. And one of the reasons I was sick of being employed is not in my job description, people. <laughs> I was like, you don't have a job description, do you? You just kind of crack on and get on with it. So, so I quit. So working for yourself really suits your personality type much yeah. better than nine to five office job like some of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can yeah. literally just roll out of bed, yeah. sit in yeah. front of my PC in my pyjamas and I'm done. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I mean, when I left the military, I, I did a short time also. I served for eight years. And when I left, there was nothing like XFE Enterprise. And... And I wonder, had XFE been around when I left, would I have gone into business for myself as opposed to for someone else? But here we are. And so, Jen, thank you. Great to meet you. I'm not going to move on to Nigel to find um, out a little bit about yourself, please. So I'm Nigel Seaman. I'm the founder of Combat to Coffee, which is a veterans and families mental health program or project uh, company. And I'm one of the 282 injured, wounded and sick who went through the business experience program with uh, Help for Heroes. And we've grown quite significantly over the last four years. I'm quite pleased to say we've got 12 staff. We turned over half a million pounds last year. And everything that we do is about mental health. And through my journey, I served just over 12 years uh, with my local regiment, got out, had a very successful career in the prison service, civil service. And unfortunately, just three life events within three months I had a breakdown in my mental health due to something I was involved with back in Northern Ireland in 1994. And going through my recovery, uh, I was at combat stress and I had a coffee machine in my room and coffee makes conversation. And that's all we do. We, we literally use coffee as a tool to conversation for people to get help. We, I've brought something to show. We label everything with mental health messages which allows people to take that home and get some help if they need it. And 
we're on to something quite big, I believe. I keep getting told you you've got a good thing here, but it's it's the message, it's the helping, and 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 and, and genuinely, uh, we roast the coffee as well, and we help veterans in prison. There's lots to it, and it's growing day by day. It's a great message. Coffee makes more, uh, also espresso martinis, so maybe that's the next evolution of the business. <laughs> I totally agree, because I'm a big advocate of mental health because of my journey, but you can have alcohol with mental health as long as it's in moderation. In moderation. <laughs> Thank you very much. I'm going to move on to Neil now, who's uh, I, I've met at a number of these occasions now, and um, he's definitely a veteran of the XFE process as well, so maybe you could share with the room a little bit about your journey. So uh, I've had Dorking Brewery for seven years now. It feels like only a year. Uh, I employ 11 staff. We sell 11,000 pints a week to trade. This year we'll double our turnover to a million pounds and we'll expand our team to over 30. So we supply pubs, clubs, hotels around South London and Surrey. Uh, I've been a Royal Naval Reservist for nearly 20 years now. I've deployed twice, um, but my background was with Philips Electronics as a civilian. I got fed up. I did my last tour of duty and thought, I'm going to do my own thing. Midlife crisis, buy a brewery, good move. <laughs> um, but it also starts conversations, so we're in the same industry. Um, so, um, yeah, very proud to be part of the XFE community. Super, thank you. I'm going to now move on to Sean. I got very excited when I seen your details on there, but it was selective <laughs> reading because I seen Donut Pig and thought there's going to be great treats. But uh, it's not quite uh, in the donut industry, a uh, quirky name. Maybe you can tell us a little bit about Hi, your um, organisation. So I'm Sean. I'm the managing director of Donut Pig Digital Media. We're a, a social media and website design agency uh, 26 miles away from Inverness. So uh, four o'clock start to be here to sum up today. Um, so... Um, X Forces helped me uh, fund my first business, Murray Digital. And since then, through the support that they've given me, I've been able to grow my business, acquire a second business, merge them, um, um, and grow. Um, I'm also a business captain uh, with X Forces. And the reason I give back is I think when we're in the military, we have everyone with us, and you have your colleagues to bounce ideas off. But in business, it's very lonely. And sometimes just having that person at the end, and that's where the business captains is really, I think, a very big part of X Forces, um, that there is someone who's there just to help you. Um, and today, I'm not supposed to say it, but I am going to say it. Um, I got a phone call on the way here today. Um, I've just been awarded my Gold Armed Forces Covenant Award. Oh. Um, so, It's, it's supposed to be embargo till Wednesday, so <laughs> I'm sorry. All the live streaming will be turned off, so it'll be fine. fine. And over to Hannah. So this is someone that I'm sure many people in the room will recognise. I was actually going to facilitate my session from the floor, and then these seats were a little bit too reminiscent of the Dragon's Den, so I thought, <laughs> I'm going to sit over here where it's safe. Make me nervous. I thought your uh, yeah. pitch in the Dragon's Den was, was nothing short of impressive. Oh, thank and, you. And, really and I'm kind. sure you'll tell us a little bit about your journey with XFE and where you are today. Yeah, so I, I, um, I don't want to sound dramatic, but I wouldn't be here without X Forces. Um, I'd be in this realm, I'd be living, but I would not be running this business. Uh, I went along to a, I want to say, business discovery yeah. course, just when they were, uh, so it, just as I was leaving the RAF, I think they were introduced. CTP. Yes, yeah. through the CTP. And there was a very tall, charismatic chap and I thought, this just sounds marvellous. I could run my own business because I, I just didn't think that's something I could do. I'm sure many of us, when we came to leave the military and came to the end of our time, and if we said, oh, I, might, I might want to start a business, you, you tend to be surrounded by people who say, well, what's your plan B? You really should you know, think about writing a CV and taking that really well-worn path. And the CTP was really trying to sort of push me down that path. Um, so I nearly went into sort of HR management. I had a master's by that point really glad I didn't and I was sort of captivated uh, by this idea of this notion of starting my own business I'd started selling a uh, lip balm so I run Toddle which is a skincare company uh, mainly because my eldest son has really sensitive skin and I started making my own lip balm in my kitchen and I thought hang on a second this could be something uh, so yeah those first sort of really challenging steps into business when I just really wasn't sure X-Forces were there. I think we did about three or four 
business plan rewrites, uh, maybe more. I didn't have a clue. Uh, and now, yeah, we're a seven-figure company. We sell into uh, America, across Asia, the UK, obviously. Um, having some really exciting conversations with retail. We sell into Holland and Barrett. And uh, if I can do it, then anyone can. And it's, it's down to exporters. And I'd be intrigued to know, having been through the, the X-Forces um, programme and then finding yourself stood in the Dragon's Den, mm. you know, how did that prepare you for that experience? Because it was a really slick delivery. Thank you. And it got national headline recognition for, for what you achieved in that room. And I think a combination of both your time in the military and the skills that that has empowered you with, but also I'd be interested to hear what XFE and then the subsequent Dragon's Den journey has brought to your business. So I think one of the key things is just the terminology. Um, I think X Force has really introduced me to, you know, corporate speak. In the RF, we just didn't talk about revenue. We didn't talk about gross net. I didn't know what those things meant. Embarrassed to admit that now. And so really thoroughly understanding and, and thoroughly understanding the end to end process of my business, which is what they force you to do at the beginning when you're going after that loan. Um, some of the things I thought, this isn't necessary, you know, a, a three, four year cash flow forecast, how much am I going to spend on stationery in year three, come on. But understanding the granularity of your business and how you build a business, it really changed my mindset. So I went into the den, you know, coupled with the, I think, the, the military mindset of really planning. So I was very fortunate in my military career to work for some really formidable senior officers. You've gone on to do wonderful things. I've, I was really lucky. And they force you to think of the second and third order effects. You can't walk in there and go, I'm not, I'm not quite sure, sir. You have to know. So I treated those five dragons like any senior officer I was briefing. Um, and, and you know what? They weren't quite as scary. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, well, well, but, but to answer the latter part of your question, since the den, I mean, um, the business is, it, it's scaled, it's grown so much. So a lot of the export interest has come from being on the BBC. It's, it's watched internationally and I wasn't, you know, Walmart are interested because they saw us on BBC America. I didn't know just how credible it was internationally. Uh, we've, we've, we've grown in number. Retailers come to us now, which is quite nice after me banging on their door for three or four years. Uh, so, yeah, and I think part of it as well since Dragon's Den is I show up differently. So I was having this conversation with Stephen Bartlett about three weeks ago, and I said, people see me differently since Dragon's Den. They, they know I know my numbers. They know I can build a brand. He said, no, you show up differently. You know, you're a, you know you're a businesswoman now, I'm, and I'm not, you know, just somebody who's left the RAF and I'm trying to build a business. I, I run a multi-million pound business, and... I went through one of the most difficult ways to prove that, doing it in front of six million people on TV. Um, so, yeah, I do show up differently now, which is uh, it's, it's quite nice. Super. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> I want to hog all of the questions. I'm going to open it up to the floor to see if any of you would like to ask a question of any of our panellists. David. Mark, I think I should... Can I ask you to... Yeah, thank you. I, I should... Correct, first of all, um, for the audience's benefit, that you describe yourself as a nine to five. Um, <laughs> I think it's more a zero six to 2100 hours in a. Yeah, uh, I a fail in, in a nine to five. <laughs> uh, fantastic achievements, humbling, inspiring um, your stories. I'm really interested in um, if there is any piece of the jigsaw that's missing. Is there anything in your journeys that you reflect back on? and think, well, if only I had that little piece of support. So my question is, um, for the institutions that support you, the organisations, uh, Defence, the Frontline Commands, is there, anything, is there anything that we could do differently to support you? Is there anything missing? So is it from a military point of view or from a commercial point of view? In your, in, in, in your journeys, do you look back and think, if, if I had, this is all fantastic support, if I had that one... But that one thing that was missing. So, so what can we do better to support you and the wider institution? Now, are we missing anything? I, think, I, I mean, I can only come from a reservist hat on, and I've been very fortunate to have had a foot in both camps, both my career. I think my observation would be is that wider experience of the commercial world, whether it's work experience placements that might be more routine. One example I see with my reservist hat on is a business case in the military is nothing like as rigid or as um, well thought out as perhaps a commercial business case might be. And when it's your own money you're putting in 20 or 30,000 pounds, 
you do a serious amount of detail into it compared to maybe a million pound military one. And I think having experience with placements in the commercial world, whether it be with Amazon or large companies, I think would be really useful for people. I think it's the transition as well from the military to uh, civilian street. We all, all of us have served. We've all trained to a very high standard. We're all quirky people in our own rights as well. Most military people are. But this, the untraining, when you go to a civvy street, we're not really trained for that transition. We still will have our military basic training in us for the rest of our lives. And when you start going into business, it's about empowering that knowledge on them transition workshops, more about people like us, that there is opportunities, because that just might give the people going back into the community their opportunity to take their step into business. It, it's, it's great that we're here, but actually with the OVA, using them as an example to put us out there more, because then there'll be more people take them opportunities, which may change their life at a later date. Any more to add from David's perspective? Um, I would just say that I think that the Armed Forces Covenant, I think uh, it needs more power behind it. I think employers still don't understand the value of veterans, um, and, and that's, you know, I think that needs some work. And I might just give it a different perspective from a Defence Prime, because at Landmark, we've really tried to champion the small medium enterprise and the X Forces enterprise community into our supply chain. And sometimes the, the defence procurement system makes that quite a, a tough ask. But you can do it, but for those sort of short, noticed, agile opportunities to bring some of these awesome business into our supply chain, I think that can sometimes be hampered by the existing uh, procurement protocols and processes. So I'll offer it out to another question from the room. Yes, at the back. You don't run now, aren't you? <laughs> <laughs> oh, I know it'll be you, Thank you very much. Hello, guys. Uh, my name's Rob. Um, I just want to say thank you very much um, for, obviously, all that you've done. And it's great to actually see that within this community that there is success as well. But for myself, I actually wanted to talk less about the success, but more about the mental health. So for myself, something that I deal with, so my, my business at the moment is pre-market valuation of 300,000. But there's so much imposter syndrome. There's so much self-doubt. And especially as I'm starting to get recognized by high-profile clients, that's when I actually start to shoot myself in the foot. So for me personally, with your journeys, I'd love to know like how yourselves kind of got through that sort of stages, and if you did witness that as well. Thank you. It's, it's such a good point. Um, I think you can feel really like a fish out of water, as you were saying. You've, you've been through all this military training, you've got this sort of mili military lexicon, you're used to the rank structure, the uniform, and then you're sort of thrown out into the world, and, and who am I to make a success of this? These people have been doing it for years. So I think imposter syndrome is such a, a barrier. Um, and, and Stephen Bartlett has a podcast, which I really um, would... Uh, would recommend a CEO, a diary of a CEO, and he talks about imposter syndrome being your friend because you'll show up as the most prepared person, you'll show up humble, and you will constantly learn because you don't take anything for granted. And he has imposter syndrome to, to quite a severe extent, actually. He was sharing with me uh, a few weeks ago. And uh, he, he, how many hundreds of millions or billions is he worth? I'm not sure now, if, as of today. Uh, but it's, it's not a, a bad thing to want to, to not be complacent and show up as the most prepared person in the room. And I think most people have imposter syndrome. He has countless people on his uh, on his podcast, you know, you know, the leaders of business and sport and whatever else, and they all say they've got imposter syndrome. So you're in good company. Um, you'll probably be incredibly prepared. You come across incredibly humble, so use it as your superpower. I'm, I'm going to agree completely there. I've got imposter syndrome right now. Absolutely. <laughs> 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 But it does, it does motivate you. Just keep your training up to date. It'll motivate you to keep learning because if you feel inadequate, you're going to do what you need to do to be adequate, but also start to learn to understand that imposter syndrome is kind of in your head. You, you know your stuff. You just need to remind yourself and surround yourself with people who will remind you that you know your stuff. Join the X Forces community. 
They'll all remind you. <laughs> or as um, Dougie likes to say constantly, is you know more than the people you're telling. You know. I think just on the thing about mental health, which is probably the other point you mentioned, it's really, really hard running a business. And there are many days, and this week I've had a really tough week as well. And sometimes you want to scream from the rooftops, because all you do is deal with problems. Mm -hmm. And I think your support network's really important. Um, I had a coffee with PJ before we came here, just have a bit of a rant about business and how you get through things. And actually did me the world of good, because I realised I'm not on my own. And I think your support network of who you speak to when times are tough is really important. And there's nothing like speaking to a business owner because they've been there and done that and probably got the t-shirt and you're not alone. And sometimes it can feel really, really lonely. Mm -hmm. And I've had it many times. And I think as you grow, you get the team around you. And, and last year, we're trying to tackle mental health in that Veterans and Families Network. I nearly went pop myself and I didn't do this to go pop. Do you know, I've done this to get the message out and, and really to the point of that I managed to refer myself back for some mental health support and so on. But the team have started to come around us, which has actually now taken that to the next level. And I think it's just being a bit honest and open and, and, and transparent. And I was going to say this at the end, and this isn't to hijack it. If that wasn't for this programme I'd done, I probably wouldn't be here now. The, 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 the belief that was been put of me from X forces to take something forward has probably saved my life, but also saved many others as well. So I just want to say thank you for that as well. Okay. Thank you. And Rob, if you're not familiar with the XFE uh, services, there is the Big Business Supporting Small Business Programme. So there is a group of big businesses with a group of industry leaders across all sectors who have got business mentors that through the XFE programme can support small businesses that, uh, that may need it. And the imposter syndrome piece, there's lots of good people you could talk to that can convince you that we've all been there and some coping mechanisms to get through it. So thank you. Good. Got a mic here, just in the pink. One job. Make Anna run all the way. Oh. Thank you. Uh, Julie Baker, NatWest, and being the, uh, the banker in the room, I'm really keen to hear from you about your thoughts around raising finance. Is there anything you would like to see more from the finance sector? from XF. <laughs> oh, no, no. Um, We're here to collaborate. But but also, I just want to do a shout out as well to X Forces with their startup loans. That is just phenomenal what they've done to support. And, and how else can we build on that? So I think the startup loans are a really, really good way to raise finance at an affordable rate with support. What I really missed was the scale up finance and the support necessary that went with that. It's a very different journey. And I won't name my bank, it's not that West, but it's really hard. There, there, banks like security, and by definition, a startup is not necessarily always secure. And I think scale-up finance is really important, along with the support network to go with it. So I said this to Ren a few times. I think XF Forces does an amazing job in terms of getting us off the ground. The next part of the journey is helping with scale-up as we all get a little bit big, bigger. Affordable finance would be the answer to that, though. <laughs> But th that's the thing, nothing's affordable at the moment. Uh, uh, we're in a position where we're expanding, we're just uh, purchasing a, a roaster which will be able to do a roast half a tonne of coffee a day uh, on the back of a, a national contract. Now, we've not been guaranteed the national contract, but actually we're at that level, but no one will touch us at the moment with our little three kilo, but they want us to see getting this big roaster to make business matter. Well. Yes, you can go on asset finance. Yes, you can get a bank loan. But actually, the rates are probably not affordable at the moment. So I've had to go back to mum to see if she can help us in some way because we all go to the bank of mum when we need to. But it just needs to be more accessible at that midpoint because I think the businesses, probably all of our business, will just go boom even further and actually reach more people as well. Sorry, can I just add in there? We do have um, Richard Beerman here from um, Startup Loan, British Business Bank. Oh, here. Thank you, Anna. We do have Richard Beerman here, and I know this is something that he is working on. So it's not falling on deaf ears, and I don't know if Richard wants to say anything more on that, but I know it's something. Where are you, Richard? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you for bringing that question up. 
Well, that's being th thrown into the into the yeah. So yeah, <laughs> it, it, yeah, absolutely. I think it's so startup loans. Yeah, we, we we are really proud of what we do with with X Forces and 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 the impact we have on startup businesses. But I, I couldn't agree more with what you said around. It, it's great to build a network of startups, but we have to also have the funding available for those startups to grow. And whether they sort of grow into sort of huge scale ups of sort of multi million pounds or just to the next level. Um, I, I can't say where we are on it, but yeah, we're working on it at the British Business Bank. So we are working on that at the moment. I just thought, I, I was, wasn't going to say this, but I just thought a, a thank you as well to, to Neil. But Neil, we, we, we met as I was thinking of leaving my previous role. And uh, you inspired me to do this role and work with startup loads because you just had a startup load and be telling me all about it. So thank you. So through 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 yourself, through X Forces, that influenced my life as well. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, we've got another question back left. Hello, um, Zoe Darmber from the RMA, the Royal Marines Charity. I just wanted to ask the question to you about being employers now. So leaving, being independent, going through self-employment, and now you have the privilege of being able to look at a CV and understand the terminology and what it means. So you have the upper hand in being able to employ veterans and make their life a little bit easier. I'm interested to know how you feel about employers that don't have that insight and how much of the ownership should be put on them to understand transferable skills, rather than putting the pressure on the service lever who is already going through so much? I'm going to be a bit controversial, if I may. I, th I think it should sit on the service lever. Employers are really busy people. They have hundreds of CVs crossing their desk, and, and you've got to stand out from the crowd, and, and, and it's a race to win. What the military can do better, and we can all help here, is act as that translation service between what does it mean with an acronym, as a corporal, for example, and how does that translate to a civilian CV? I think the military has the resources to do it, but it needs a, a, a sort of foot in both camps, and maybe we can help do that. But I think it absolutely has to sit on the military, the service leavers, to explain in normal language what they do. It's not about the employer, in my opinion. And if I can just build, if you can get the language right, yeah. I think there's a huge opportunity for small, medium enterprises, especially in rural communities to then be quite a significant impact on local employment. And talking to Sean earlier today, you're, you're in a reasonably remote location, but the things that you're doing is having a big impact on your local community from an employment perspective. Yeah, I think, um, I think one of the biggest problems is uh, employers don't understand what a corporal is in civilian life or a captain is, um, and having that mapped across, and I know uh, for a networking event, I was at the Officers Association. I know there's been some work around that, um, and I think that needs a bit more work so employees understand if you ha have been a, a major in, in the British Army, that you they know what level that equates to in civilian world. Yeah, thank you. Right, we've got three minutes left, so I'll take here on the second row. Sorry, just one of the things on the military side, what I think you can do better for service leavers in that last six months of employment is, is start, sorry, start talking to them and treating them as civilians a lot earlier than what it actually is. Um, and definitely drumming in the language around what are their key skills from their role. So they might have their terms of reference for what their role is, be that in communications, a tank driver, an aircraft handler, or anything else. But their, key, their, their terms of reference, they understand that. And in the last six months of service, there, sh there should be training around what are your key skills personally that you can take into civilian street with you and try that st and start that translation earlier in the, in the leaving service process. Yeah, that's a good point. But I think getting the, the military to start treating its own people yeah. like civilian in the last six months might be a bit of a tall ask. But then how can we give them access in their final year, six months, to organisations that can begin that transition, change the language, change the experience? I think that might be an interesting one to explore. So yeah, can I just explain um, a little bit on this one? Mike Cherry uh, was chair of FSB. Uh, and one of the things that we struggled with when we did the uh, FR 2020 submission was to highlight the problem that you've got in translating what the military understand as their skill sets 
into what civilians understand as the skill sets that they're looking for. And I think there's a huge learning curve here still to be undertaken so that the military can translate into civilian speak what those skills actually are so that civilian employers can understand it. Some large companies do it very, very well. JLR, I know, do it. And they actually make sure that that translation between the two happens so that they, uh, people that are taking on, have already done that. But for small businesses in particular, if you haven't been a reservist or if you haven't been in the armed forces full time, um, these acronyms and everything else just don't mean anything, and neither do they understand the leadership and management skills that you have, even at the lower ranks, to be able to transport into a small business. Thank you. There's, there's, there's a massive skill set on this stage, and I think there's some big employers and big corporate companies in here, and actually we could all be utilised very quite easily as our different businesses quite together as our own unique project. So we were just talking about funding. If any of the big people out there want to use all of us five to bring us some money in, then why not use us? I'll do the coffee, the beer will come, the social media, and our skin will look great and you'll process it all over you. Do you know what I mean?